A woman's gruesome suicide leaves people wondering what really happened decades later. This is the case of Elfrida Knack. Let's step into the cold. Elfrida Knack was only 30 years old when she died. Her death was ruled a suicide. Born on the 21st of September 1898 to Elise and Theodore Knack, Elfrida was a book saleswoman and a Sunday school teacher. She had three older sisters and four older brothers and was known to her family as Fritzy. Her family ran Knack's Pharmacy in Deerfield, Illinois, the town the family resided in. But on the 2nd of November 1928, Elfrida died in a Lake Forest hospital. Just a few days earlier, on the 30th of October, an employee at the Lake Buff City Hall headed down into the basement to light the furnace at 7.30am. The door to the basement was locked and the employee let himself in. Something felt wrong. On the door was a bloody handprint and footprints in blood and ash trailed up the cellar stairs and back in the direction of the furnace. When the employee approached the furnace, he found Elfrida Knack naked and leaning against the furnace. Elfrida had suffered severe burns to her feet, hands and face. She was rushed to hospital. What had happened to Elfrida? On the morning of the 30th of October, Elfrida travelled to Chicago for a business meeting. The company she worked for published spiritual and religious tracts and it was Elfrida's job to give a speech to fellow employees that day. After she finished work, she arrived at the Highland Park Depot around 6pm. Earlier, Elfrida had called her sister, telling her she had bought some new sheet music and to expect her home around 7.30pm. At the depot, Elfrida learned that she would have to wait several hours to catch a bus back to Deerfield. Elfrida was then seen making two phone calls. One went unanswered, but during the other call, Elfrida was observed speaking in a low, hushed voice. Elfrida then bought a return ticket to Lake Bluff, and she was seen by the station master arriving at the town. This was the last time Elfrida was seen before she was found in the cellar of Lake Bluff City Hall. In the hospital, Elfrida told investigators that she was responsible for the injuries she had suffered. Elfrida was interested in religion and spiritualism and she said she had burned herself in the furnace to prove her faith. When asked about the locked door, Elfrida said it had been locked by a mystical hand. But not long before she died, Elfrida suggested that she wasn't alone in the furnace room when she was burned. She said she had made a suicide pact with another woman, but when Elfrida began to burn herself, the other woman ran away. Elfrida then changed her story again, saying Frank had thrown her down there, and they did this. But when she spoke to her brother Alvin, she admitted that someone had given her the key to the furnace room, and that she was alone when she was burned. Elfrida tried to tell Alvin the name of a woman who could explain everything, but she died before she was able to do so. A coroner's jury ruled Elfrida's death a suicide. One of her brothers spoke at the coroner's inquest, saying that his sister was trying to prove the power 
of mind over matter. The police, however, were certain that Elfrida hadn't been alone in the furnace room. The autopsy revealed that Elfrida's burns weren't the only injuries she had suffered. She had been electrocuted and hit on the head. At the coroner's inquest, doctors had said that the blood found in the cellar wasn't Elfrida's because the severity of the burns on her feet would prevent bleeding. When police looked inside the furnace, they found strands of Elfrida's hair and bits of her skin, along with burned pieces of clothing and metal clasps from Elfrida's dress. But the police were puzzled as to how Elfrida was able to burn herself. The furnace door was too high off the ground and too small for her to have burned her own feet and legs. This suggested to the police that even if Elfrida wanted to die, she had help in achieving this. About ten feet away from the furnace, the police found Elfrida's shoes, watch and purse. A letter found in the purse was from someone called B. Locke, or H. P. Locke, a woman who Elfrida had become friends with because of their shared interest in religion. Also found was a book titled Christ in You by an anonymous author. The book was a text recommended to followers of the New Thought Movement, something that Elfrida had an interest in. The book discussed astral projection and spiritual purification. The police believed Elfrida had been studying the book as one particular page had been marked. Two sentences on the page stood out, and especially the final three words, which had been underlined. They read, I tell you, it is impossible to know true joy, the heights of joy, until you have known the corresponding depths of pain. This is the process known as the refiner's fire. B. Locke later turned out to be a woman called Luella Rower, but she never gave the police any information about Elfrida's death. Part of her letter apparently read as follows. Not once did I think of being anything beyond being a friend until the third time you came and the way you looked at me. Then the next time you came, you mastered me more than ever. Did someone help Elfrida to prove her faith, which was what Elfrida initially said she was trying to do? Or did someone murder her? A month after Elfrida died, a man in Texas wrote a letter to the police, claiming he was responsible for Elfrida's death. James Kelly, who also went by the name Ezra McVeigh, said that he had hit Elfrida over the head with a poker before helping her burn her limbs and head in the furnace. Kelly also said he had attacked another woman in Lake Forest. It was determined that Kelly, who was originally from Michigan and deserted the army, was mentally ill and he was sent to a hospital. What was the reason Elfrida travelled to Lake Bluff that night? Some believed she had gone to visit a married man she was involved with. While in hospital, Elfrida also said this was the reason she was in the town. Charles W. Hitchcock had once starred in a series of short films made between 1911 and 1915 at SNA Studios in Chicago. After trying his hand at acting, he moved to Lake Bluff where he taught classes in elocution and salesmanship at a studio. Charles was also a night police officer, stationed at the police station located 
in Lake Bluff City Hall. Elfrida had once been a student of his, but Charles denied any relationship with Elfrida. Some pointed out that it was unlikely that he was involved in Elfrida's death, as he was confined to his home at that moment in time because of a broken leg. What about the person named Frank Elfrida had mentioned while in the hospital? A violin teacher called Frank P. Mundy shared a studio with Charles Hitchcock, but it is unclear if Frank ever met Elfrida. With Elfrida's death ruled a suicide, her story faded into history. Exactly what happened that October night will never be known. Was Elfrida only trying to prove her faith? Did she intend to kill herself? Or did someone get away with murder?